господин полковник, я что-то нашу. Helena was now at home. She had gone through the squeaky iron gate, crossed the garden with its shrubs and high yellowing grass, which looked more like an extension of the wild forest than a cared-for garden. The house had never been a model of orderly maintenance. Some of the roof tiles were broken. Ground ivy had climbed on certain walls to the point that the gutters were obstructed by it trapping the dead leaves which had accumulated as a result of numerous storms. The temperature inside the house was comfortable. Isolated by thick stone walls, it was heated by a central fireplace. After taking care of her grandfather in his armchair, Helena went upstairs, set her things down in her room, impatient to get to her piano. It was a concert grand piano, positioned in the center of the largest room on the floor. Around it were chairs and music stands with sheet music lying around on them. The dusk filtered in through a small window, providing the pianist with over-the-shoulder light, slightly to one side, so that the sheet music was not in shadow. The room was perfect for concentration and contemplation. It was an ideal place to celebrate the cult of eternally great music, greater than man and capable of elevating souls to divinity. Helena placed the music on the stand, sat down on the velvet-covered bench, and closed her eyes. It was characteristic of the greatest virtuosos to listen before playing. She heard the entire piece inside of her, giving each tonality a different color, each nuance the weight of an animal, such as a bird, a lion, or an elephant. Her father, Victorio Conta, a renowned orchestra conductor, had taught her the art of internalizing the music, of detaching it from the mechanical constraints of the instrument. The piece was not dependent on a metal or wood tool. It had to reach the soul of the musician, who would then direct his instrument to the most precise possible reflection of his interior vision. When at last she put her fingers on the keyboard, she was ready. The image of the music was clear and precise, and the demands of her magnificent instrument unbending. It was incredibly satisfying to suddenly feel as if she had left the real world and was floating in a half-dreamy state where everything was possible and where everything was absolute emotion and beauty. It was a world of love in which violence could be beautiful and where dissonance resolved itself in harmony a bit like a state of wild nature without the presence of man, where balance was the rule of law. Suddenly she stopped. 